Cooldowns can be very confusing, especially if you are a beginner, but I believe with these 5 simple methods you'll never have to worry about cooldowns again. Whether you need to set up player with abilities that have cooldowns, make traps that are activated with timer, or set up enemies behavior that works on cooldowns and timers, all of that can be achieved with these 5 methods. And we're going to start with number 5. Coroutines. Coroutines are pretty straightforward and very beginner friendly. What you should know about them before you use them is that coroutine can be paused. You can pause implementation of a coroutine for a certain amount of seconds or frames till you wanted to proceed further. It can be used for so many different cases, but today we're just going to look a way of making a cooldown with the help of coroutine. So over here I have simple script with two variables cooldown duration in seconds and flag to indicate if the ability is ready to use. In my method cast ability, I check if ability is ready to use. If it's not, I return from a method, which basically means we interrupt in the function and we do not implement anything after return. But if it's ready to use, I implement the functionality, for example, I use an ability, then I start a coroutine. It's very important to remember that you cannot call coroutine as a method like this. It won't work. You actually need to type start coroutine and then the name of a coroutine. Inside of coroutine we set ability ready to false, so during the cooldown it cannot be used again. Then by typing yield return new wait for seconds of cooldown, we pause this coroutine and after duration of cooldown we make ability ready true and it's ready to be used again. Number 4. Invoke. Invoke is actually very simple, but lately I don't like to use it as much. So how it works? By using invoke you can delay an implementation of a method. It's pretty simple to do. You type invoke, name of a method, and tell computer for how long it should wait before invoking the method. It is also good practice to type name of and then name of a method instead of typing method in a quotation marks as it will be harder to make a mistake this way. So anytime you cast an ability, you just invoke a method that will set ability ready to true with a delay of cooldown duration. Number 3. Time dot delta time. This is one of my favorite and I'm pretty sure students of my courses recognize this one. Time dot delta time returns interval in seconds from last frame to current one. If that sounds confusing, all you should know that time dot delta time can be used to constantly reduce or increase value with the same rate, frame independent rate. Thanks to that, we can create an ability timer and reduce it with a time dot delta time. Now that we have it, we can reset timer every time we cast an ability. Now, all that's left to do is to check if timer is bigger than zero. If it is, we return from a method because ability is not ready. And that's it. By the way, if you are interested in learning game development, I invite you to check my courses at unityalexdev.com. I have various genres that are suitable both for beginners and for those who have experience. Number 2. Number 2. Sorry, I tried to be announcer as much as I can. Invoke repeating. This one is very similar to invoke, but it cannot be used for every situation. But still, I want you to know about this one. Invoke repeating allows you not only to invoke method after delay, but also repeat method each certain amount of seconds. Thanks to that, you can make traps or certain enemy behaviors with a cooldown you want. Like I'm doing here, for example, activating fire and then deactivating fire. By the way, by making boolean equals to boolean with exclamation mark, you'll simply set boolean to an opposite value. If it was true, it will become false. If it was false, it will be true. Works like a switcher. Number 1. Time.time. .time. This is one of my favorite because it looks the cleanest and requires the least amount of code. I use it a lot in my projects, I did this in my RPG course, in a top-down shooter and even in the endless runner. The idea is simple, time to time returns the time that has passed in the game in seconds. If game just begun, time to time will be 0. If 15 seconds pass since game launched, it will be equals to 15. We can use it to keep track of a cooldown. You make a variable, last time casted, for example, and every time you cast an ability, you simply make last time casted equals to time dot time. With this information, you can set up cooldown. All you need to do is to compare time dot time with the last time casted plus cooldown. 
This one may be confusing, so let's talk example here. Let's say you casted a spell when time in the game is equals to 5. Now, your last time casted is equals to 5. Next time you do in check, you see if current time is less than last time casted plus cooldown. If it is, then not enough time has passed and you return from a method. If it's bigger, cooldown has passed and you can cast ability again. Very, very cool. Thanks for paying attention. Leave your comments below. Check my website for more tutorials. I want to thank my students and Patreons and give special thanks to RetroBad Gamer and Friendly Robot. Thanks to you guys, these videos are possible.